Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 5 The Nature of God by Andrew Womack. To have a positive relationship with the Lord, we must know his nature and his real character. Is he angry because of our sin? Or is he a merciful God who wants to give us his life and blessing independent of our performance? The scriptures actually give us two different views of God, not that he has ever changed or done anything differently. There was a period of time that in the terminology used in the Bible, God held men's sins against them. This can be compared to raising children. When they're very young, it isn't possible to reason with them, to tell them why they should act properly or why they shouldn't be selfish and take toys away from their brothers or sisters. They have to be told the rules, and if they break them, be disciplined. The rules have to be enforced even though they don't know about God and the devil, or that they're giving place to the devil when they are selfish. They may not understand the concepts, but they can understand that if they repeat the action, they will be punished. In a sense, that is what the Lord did with the Old Testament. Before people were born again, they didn't have the spiritual perception we have under the New Covenant. So he had to give laws and enforce them with punishment, sometimes even death, to deter them from sin. Because Satan was destroying people through sin, there had to be restraints placed on sin, and they had to be enforced. Although this left the false impression that God didn't really love us because of our sin. That is not what the Word of God teaches. Romans 5 verse 13 says, For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Until the law means until the days of Moses, when God gave the Ten Commandments and other ceremonial laws that applied to the Jewish nation. Up until that time, sin was in the world, but wasn't imputed. The word impute is a bookkeeping term. E.g., you go to the store to buy something and say, put it on my tab. When it is put on your tab, it is recorded and charged against your account, and the purchase is imputed to you. If they failed to impute it, that means it wasn't recorded and held against you. This verse is saying that until the time the Ten Commandments came, sin was not being held against people. That's an amazing statement. Look at Genesis chapters 3 and 4. Most people have the concept that when Adam and Eve sinned against God because he was holy and man was now sinful, he could have nothing to do with sinful mankind. They think God drove man out of the garden to remove him from his presence because a holy God could not have anything to do with unholy man. They further think that until you clean up your act through right actions, God once again cannot have any relationship with you. That is contrary to the message Jesus brought. Romans 5 verse 8 says, God commended his love toward you, and while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. So the New Testament teaches that God extended his love to you while you were living in sin, not after you cleaned up your act. One of the great truths of the gospel that will change your life is to understand that God loves you just like you are. He loves you so much that if you receive his love, you won't want to stay as you are. You will change. 
but you'll change as a byproduct of God's love, not in order to get his love. In Genesis 4, you can see that God was still fellowshipping with man, still talking with Adam and Eve, even after they sinned. He talked with Cain and Abel, and when they came to offer sacrifices to him, he spoke to them in an audible voice. By their reaction, we can see that they were accustomed to hearing his voice, and it did not scare them. When Cain killed his brother Abel and became the first murderer on the earth, God's audible voice came from heaven. Where is your brother Abel? Cain lied to God, seemingly without compunction. That can happen only if a person is so used to hearing the voice of God that they take it for granted and have no fear of it. All this says is that God was still fellowshipping with mankind and had not broken fellowship as is commonly believed. He was not imputing man's sins to him. Does that mean that he condoned their sins or that they were not wrong? No. That's the reason he eventually gave the law. God had to give the law to bring man back to a proper standard. God had to show man that he needs a savior and that he has to humble himself and receive forgiveness as a gift. Sadly, religion has manipulated and controlled these things to teach that the law was given so you can keep it and thereby earn God's forgiveness and acceptance. No, the purpose of the Old Testament law was to magnify your sin to such a degree that you would despair of ever saving yourself and say, God, if this is your standard of holiness, I cannot do it. Forgive me. Have mercy on me. The overall nature of God has always been love. Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read Romans 5 verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Question. What does the word impute mean? Answer. To charge to one's account. We read Romans 7 verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law, or I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, You shall not covet. Question. What was the purpose of the law? Answer. To make sin known. We read Galatians 3 verse 24. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Question. According to this verse, what was the purpose of the law? Answer. To show mankind their need of the Savior, Jesus Christ. We read John 8 verses 1 to 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. 
And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses, in the law, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Question. How did Jesus deal with the woman caught in adultery? Answer. In mercy and grace. We read John 3, verse 34. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. Question. Did Jesus' words and actions reflect the true nature of God? Answer. Yes. We read 1 John 4, verse 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Question. According to this verse, what is the true nature of God? Answer. Love. We read Romans 5, verse 6. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Question. God's love was directed towards us when we were what? Answer. Without strength, i.e. helpless and ungodly. We read Romans 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Question. God loved us while we were what? Answer. Sinners. We read Romans 5 verse 10. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more having been reconciled we shall be saved by his life. Question. God loved us while we were what? Answer. Enemies. Question. If you asked Jesus Christ to forgive you and be your Savior and Lord, trusting Jesus' sacrifice as payment for your sin, would God show you his true nature of mercy and grace? Answer, yes. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway, taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.